Hi guys, welcome back to a new video. So in this video I'll just shortly sh show you how to delete a CPU, mainly an Intel mainstream CPU, ones that are not soldered and just have a conventional thermal paste between the uh, die and the IHS, so uh, ranging from mainstream Ivy Bridge CPUs all the way until the very latest mainstream CPUs from Intel that are now soldered. So let's say from 3770K up to uh, 8700K. Those are the mainstream CPUs that are with conventional thermal paste. So uh, the deleting process varies a bit uh, with different CPUs. So the mainstream Intel CPUs are very easy to delete as they only have single layer PCB or single layer PCB. So you could even just delete them using something sharp like a razor blade. But the uh, X299 CPUs or the uh, 28 core Xeon, they have like two layer PCB. So they have one PCB stacked on the, uh, I mean, stacked on top the uh, main PCB that touches the pins. So you cannot delete such a, sheet as such a CPU with razor blade. So you have to use a dedicated deleting tool. And even for mainstream CPUs like the uh, i3-7350K, which is the CPU in this case over here, I would still use a deleting tool as it's definitely the safest way to do that. So I don't recommend you use a vise. There are many failed pictures with someone using a vise and the whole uh, PCB, uh, CPU PCB has been broken into pieces and then it's say, uh, pretty much uh, end of story or game over. So uh, even razor blade is safer than wise in my opinion, but really you should just use a del deleting tool like this. You can, uh, these do not cost that much. And if you are clever enough, you can probably just ask on a local forum that if, if someone near you has a deleting tool already, so you could just lend it for free or cover just the postage or just even give a few euros or US dollars for being able to use the deleting tool on your own CPU. So that's definitely the uh, safest way to do that. So uh, in this case, I'm using this quite old uh, rotation method deleting tool. This was actually uh, designed by a Finnish guy. He's still active at our forums, but this uh, deleting tool is now uh, sadly uh, discontinued. So you cannot buy this anymore, but this was available globally from uh, here in Finland, so uh, this is very good. So this can deal it. Uh, Ivy Bridge, Haswell, Sky Lake, KB Lake, and even the uh, 1900K, which is a solid CPU. You can deal it the 1900K using the uh, Ivy Bridge top piece, as I already showed in my uh, uh, deleting video, when I, where I deleted, deleted the uh, 1900K. So that. That way this has been very very universal and very handy uh, tilting tool but yeah so uh, i just got this 750k from ebay i bought this because uh, it has very nice patch so this is the l652c which many believe even including me that this is the best overclocking uh, 7350k patch so i have not even tested this yet so uh, i will just get get on and just delete this quickly so uh, we can see how it overclocks soon so uh, the way you uh, delete CPU is just put the uh, CPU here at the middle of the uh, deleting uh, tool and then I will just put the uh, top piece on which will lock the uh, CPU in place so this uh, deletes the CPU by just rotating the IHS and uh, that way it will break the glue so uh, this is a bit different from uh, the more common ones like the uh, Devours Delete Die Mate or similar. So now here's the uh, screw, the plastic screw which I just have to uh, tighten. With this tool you can almost delete a CPU with just fingers, so you don't even need an Allen key to finish the job. It varies a bit, but some CPUs you can almost delete the whole thing if you are strong enough without using an uh, Allen key like this. And now it didn't pop, but it came loose now. So yeah, now it's deleted. And 
that's how it looks like so the uh, you can easily see that the stock intel team isn't that great so it's kind of like dried on top of the die and on the ihs so uh, now from here we will just clean the uh, die and the pcb around it as well as this side of the ihs and uh, use our own thermal interface material between the uh, uh, die and the ihs and uh, now it's you can even use direct die solution if you want to or if you have one or you could use you could use some uh, like direct die i mean uh, some very like custom ihs if you have one but yeah so uh, uh if you already watched my uh, if you watched my direct i mean the uh, direct die video of my 9900k uh, if you want to use any any of those solutions or custom IHS, you have to uh, remove the glue from the uh, CPU's PCB. Uh, otherwise, it will will not make adequate contact. But if you just use the uh, stock Intel IHS, you don't necessarily have to uh, remove the uh, glue because, as I already explained quite thoroughly in my video, that uh, it will sit well enough even with the glue on and uh, then it will not wig wiggle when you try to uh, clamp the cpu down to the cpu socket so in that regard it's very very good so uh, as i will only be using the uh, uh, intel i just for now i will keep the glue on the pcb well there's almost none on the ihs side and i will just use my own conventional thermal paste between the die and the ihs uh, when i'm going ln2 so i'll use uh keeping cooling kpx or similar uh, if i was just going to use air or water cooling then uh, it's best to use uh, liquid metal between the uh, uh, die and the ihs because you get the most benefit by using liquid metal between the uh, i mean on the die but it cannot be used if you are going sub-zero so that is pretty much it so that is a short introduction about cpu deleting what it's all about and uh, a short guide how how you can actually do that so uh, if you have let's say uh, like a very strong uh, water cooling solution on your cpu and you use liquid metal between the uh, cpu die and the ihs you can easily gain like uh, at least from 15 to 20 degrees in temperatures if the cpu was not soldered and it had uh, conventional thermal paste between the die and the ihs just like the uh, 7350k like used on this example over here so uh, it all really depends on the actual cooling solution that you have so if you have let's say like the original uh, small intel stock cooler you will not gain that much in temperatures because the actual cooling solution is not that strong so uh, the stronger the cooling solution is the more you will gain from this uh, whole process so uh, you have to use liquid metal to get the best possible uh, temperature gain when you are using air or water cooling so any liquid metal will do so it doesn't really matter that much there is some uh, like small differences between uh, brands or the uh, different models of liquid metal team but the overall uh, difference is not that uh, big between the uh, candidates it only matters that you use some kind of liquid metal so there are options like this for example this uh, Thermal right Silver King, which I haven't tried yet. Then there's uh, Thermal Grizzly Conductor knob that is very good, and uh, some options from uh, like Cool Laboratory, the Liquid Pro and the uh, Liquid Extreme or Liquid Ultra. So uh, you should just choose one of those. And uh, if you use a cooling solution that goes below like uh, ambient temperature or like sub zero, then you have to use conventional thermal paste because liquid metal does not does not perform great when it's colder than plus 10 degrees celsius of course these uh, situations are very rare if you are just a normal user you will never do something like this but if you use some kind of some form of extreme cooling you have to use uh, conventional thermal paste between the uh, die and the ihs so uh, some high quality one like kimping cooling kpx uh, thermal grizzly cryon out that is over here then uh, jelly cheese extreme or this uh, fairly new stuff so this is the uh, thermal right 
TFX, which I haven't tried yet, but I will do a separate video about this. So uh, that's pretty much it. So it is the whole deleting process has been relevant since uh, uh, the launch of mainstream Ivy Bridge CPUs, and it is still relevant today with the uh, soldered CPUs like the 1900K. You really should watch my uh, 1900K deleting video as well as the uh, direct die testing video where I compare all the different temperatures, temperature results against each other. So uh, uh, stock non-deleted 1900K against just deleted with liquid metal, direct die with liquid metal and uh, custom IHS with, with uh, liquid metal. So, and there you can easily see uh, what are the potential gains and uh, what are the differences between uh, all the different options. So, uh, all, for example, all the uh, like the special Debauer pre-tested CPUs from Case King, they all have been deleted, even though when they were uh, soldered uh, by default, they are all deleted and they have liquid metal between the die and the HS to get the best possible uh, temperature performance and to guarantee that uh, promised overclock. So it's just saying, so even when we have these uh, solid CPUs nowadays, deleting can still be relevant because the uh, because liquid metal has still better uh, thermal performance than uh, indium solder because the overall liquid metal layer is much thinner than the uh, uh, indium solder that is used between the uh, die and the IHS. So yeah, so that is pretty much it. That's pretty much how you deal it a mainstream Intel CPU. So uh, if you like this video, if you have any comments or questions about this whole process, then please leave them down below. And uh, like and share this video once again, and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you on the next one.